Yeah, so Linus Pauling, like he was a celebrity scientist and again, very accomplished. I mean, if you look up the Linus Pauling Institute, they do a lot of vitamin research. And notice that in that previous clip, that previous clip, they said like, what should you be worried about? And especially getting poisoned by it. And someone did mention in chat as well. Yeah, A, D, and E, but also K can also be, you can accumulate a lot of that as well. And this is why, like, you, yes, the thing is that vitamin deficiencies, if you have a lack of vitamins, you're going to have disease. But the does that mean more vitamins means more healthy? Not necessarily, right? So the thing is that you can have hypervitaminosis. And the, the other thing is, like, here's another study. Like, this is what we, a study that happened, ooh, like a decade ago. So they're trying to see like, okay, if you eat more vitamin, have more vitamin E, will it protect against cancer? And they actually need to stop the vitamin E part of this trial because they started to see that and started to increase the having vitamin E supplementation over normal limits is starting to increase the risk of prostate cancer. And vitamin B, if you have too much vitamin B, they saw that it increases the lung the your lifetime risk of lung cancer as well. So it's like, that's a lot of things in your body. Like if you have a lack of something, that's the, that causes disease and poor health. But some the same with like a lot of other things. Like if you have too much blood pressure, too much sodium, too much something else. If you have excess of stuff, that can also cause disease in your body as well. So again, this all, it was like a very simplistic thing. Like things in your body are either good or they're bad. And therefore, that's like, okay, if you have lack of vitamins, that means the vitamins are good for your body. Therefore, if you take more vitamins, then you're going to be more health, you're going to be healthier. And that was kind of like what Dr. Pauling thought back in the 70s. But we're finding out more that more vitamins does not equal more healthier, more health. So, but vitamin deficiency, this is why we need the vitamins. Even though we only need a little of that, here we have a lack of vitamin A. That vi lack of vitamin A causes many things including problems with vision and then vitamin b you might have noticed like a lot of um there's like a lot of like uh say hair and nail supplements they say like okay if you want healthier and better looking nails and skin have more vitamin b especially a vitamin bi a biotin a type of vitamin b so vi biotin is actually very important for making keratin and again your hair and nails and even your skin cells they have keratin so that's why they are trying to say like okay you have health, better looking hair and nails and skin if you take these supplements. But it's more like, okay, if you're deficient in this biotin, maybe this will this will definitely improve your stuff, your um, all everything had that has keratin and your keratin synthesis. But will necessary if you already have enough biotin, will it make your hair and nails look better? That part is not proved yet. And like in that video, they mentioned scurvy, a lack of vitamin C. So even your teeth. And actually your bones in general they need vitamin c and d it's not just vitamin d and vitamin d deficiency this is what happens in in in, in kids it's called rickets but osteomalacia is just a vitamin d deficiency so this is why they look very their legs look deformed is due to a lack of vitamin d all right, so then fat versus water-soluble vitamins. And again, water-soluble vitamins, they're easier to excrete. And why is that? Well, your blood, the plasma is mostly water, and so is your urine. So it's easier to just like dump these excess vitamins in your urine and get rid of them. But the thing is that fat-soluble vitamins, these can easily accumulate. And why is that? Well, again, just like my analogy with when you have a very dirty dish pan and it's very greasy and just run water over it, it's not really going to dissolve the grease in that dish pan, right? So if you have these fat soluble vitamins, and the thing is that fat soluble vitamins also accumulate in the white adipose in your body. So if you have like, well, uh, yeah, so they can go to our fat stores in our body and accumulate because they can dissolve in fats. And this is why if it's important to know fat versus water soluble vitamins because again, you, it, fat soluble vitamins are more prone to accumulate and therefore you have more chance of developing what we call hypervitaminosis. That means you have abnormally high levels of these vitamins in your body. And the effects depend on the vitamins. So if you have a vitamin A, or if you have hypervitaminosis A, 
That's different from vit hypervitaminosis D. It depends on which one. So should you still take these? Like, well, again, is like, do you want to take all these multivitamins? Are they necessarily healthy? And if you look up on, this is why multivitamins have come under fire lately. It's like, okay, if you're already getting enough of these vitamins, is it beneficial to actually get more of these vitamins? Or are we overdosing ourselves on these vitamins? And this is an area of active research. Like, and this is why they're doing all these trials to see like, okay, what about these vitamins and what level is safe or how much do we actually need? And in those other, like the, those trials I talked about vitamin B and E, that's the thing about cancer cells. They're kind of, they're like very rude. Well, they're, cancer sucks, period. But they're kind of like rude house guests. Like they take things that are intended for your other cells and they use it for their own advantage. So they're like a house guest that comes in and eats everything in your fridge. Same with vitamins. Like vitamin E is actually a very powerful antioxidant. And this is some, and antioxidants are generally important in your body to prevent damage from free radicals. Now, cancer cells, they're very metabolically active. They generate a lot of free radicals. And part of the reason why they think the, in that select trial, they found that vitamin E was increasing the risk of prostate cancer is that cancer cells love vitamin E. They love it because they generate a lot of free radicals but they can use vitamin E to kind of save themselves and prevent damage to their own DNA so that can preserve themselves instead of letting this vitamin E go where it's needed. So again, this is why, again, everything in moderation, as someone said in chat. 